I said this one would be uh, Flying Pigs. And it is a pig pulp from the game Malifaux. Belongs to the Gremlins faction, which are basically diminutive green skinned hillbillies. Starting off on the pigs themselves with rosy skin. This is a again a pig of and piglets. even coat over the body there. And the game of Malifaux takes place on an alternate version of Earth around the early 1900s. Specifically taking place in another world. I'm not 100% sure if it's supposed to be another dimension or another planet. I think it's the former, but this is an alternate Earth where magic actually existed, and Malifa was colonized to find a new source of magic. And there are many parallels to mythical creatures, and... Boy, that just sounded weird as I said it. Uh, there are many parallels in Malifa to animals on Earth, but they're usually nastier, bigger, meaner, and the pigs are no exception. Real-world pigs are not too picky about what they eat. Had a co-worker who got his cell phone devoured by some pigs he was raising. And the pigs in this game, even less picky. And just like the Relic Knight model, Dark Space Fiametta I did a while ago, I sculpt the basing myself. And I just try to come up with something that suits the model. In this case, wet, muddy ground with who knows what in it. And it's trying to be a really good color for these pigs. I try to follow a general rule of putting at least three colors on each model. This one might only get two. Touch some of that up in a bit. It's a second coat. And we'll get the pig in the pig pull itself. So Malifaux as a game has a pretty dark sense of humor in it. And this is one model that is no exception. Because they are in fact using live pigs as ammunition. Tell the expression on this thing, he is less than enthused about being used as a projectile. Got this a bit thick. It's alright. Take him 
there and just touch it. Here, get the nice even base coat. doing a really light, almost dry brushing thing. Though this is with a full brush of paint. And this is just to get, again, an even coat over this. That little rumbling noise you hear is just a fan I've got going. It is been upper 90s to just short of 100 degrees today. I was working in a building with all the ventilation of an abandoned refrigerator of the 1950s. Some of you may not get the reference, but it used to be a big deal where kids were going into scrapyards, playing around, and playing hide and seek in abandoned refrigerators. So much so, there were all sorts of public service announcements about it. I don't know why kids would like playing in abandoned refrigerators, but, uh, yeah, kids are still learning. And we'll go ahead and do the skin tone on the gremlin. That's going to be 09035 olive green. That's way too much because he's only showing a little bit of skin. And yeah, he's wearing a cooking pot for a helmet. Those are going to be shield brown, 09161, and again I use Reaper Master Series. That should be more than enough. And I just realized I grabbed the wrong color. I meant to use a... Well, well rather than waste the paint, we'll just start on the catapult. What can I say? It's been really hot, my brain's kind of fried today. It's going to be metal, I think. That's for binding. We'll be doing that in a different color. Finish this since I started it. And I almost squirted out into where I put the paint instead of my palette. Maybe I need to take a nap before I do any further. <laughs> oh well, moving on.
and you always want to keep your brush fairly damp. Real careful around the hand I just painted. And I might redo that handle in another color. Maybe silver. Steel. These smaller details like that gear are going to be redone in another color for certain. Since this coat is below that, I'm not going to worry too much about right this minute. Definitely wood texture on that part. But the spice is going to be a different color, I think. I think I got exactly enough out to do what I need to do on this. like I do, just barely. It's got the wood. Okay, now, 09110 oiled leather. That's what I was intending to put on his boots. As well as this binding over the catapult itself. Slip up that. It's easy to fix later, though. You need to be more conscious of the camera. We'll go ahead and do his suspenders. Got that a bit too thick. There's a bit of binding near the cup. Go ahead and do the cords around the pig's feet. Just notice I got a bit of green on it, that's okay. I'll come out and wash, and it will alter it slightly, but give a unique character. Little mistakes like this you can actually work with if you're just kind of patient enough to roll with it. Even coat on that first bit of binding. And down 
here. it right there. It's found a spot where I got the paint way too thick. Okay, I'll fix it well enough. And same on this side. Carefully painting that binding. Four three yellowed bone for that. actually working. Can't actually reshoot this without uh, stripping the paint off of these, which can take a month or more depending on uh, how thick it's on and other factors. Okay, it's got that one now. up here to fix that. This happens a little touch up. It shipped off because I got it too thick. That's completely my fault. Easy to fix. Um, go ahead next and do the Gremlins pants. It's going to be where is it? Brilliant. No. no Templar blue, 09056. That's a nice denim color.
got a fit on the boot there. That's easy to fix. Just do it down like that. If I'm picking up, I don't try to patch up that grain I got on the pig's leg earlier. That's okay. I'm going to go ahead and, since I'm on a roll, do the steel. So, 09206 tarnished steel for base coat. Just going on a few odds and ends on the catapult itself. And I'll go ahead and redo that hand. There's a little hook here that goes to the gear. And if it ends up looking a little rusty, that is actually really acceptable and appropriate for this fashion since they live in swamps. At least for the most part, anyway. Go ahead and these two, do these two discs on the cord here. It's a hook pulling this tight. And I'll go ahead and do the cup. And there's a lightning storm coming in. I might have to cut this short if it gets bad enough. And that was a big one. Hit this gear here. And the wood has periscopes and the well telescope. Right. And these headgear there. Now go ahead and let that dry, and come back after this lightning storm's over. Storm's over, weird night last night. Go with 09089 cloudy gray on some rocks sculpted into the base.
one more base coat, and that's mud. So we'll start with wood stain brown. That's a Again, it's important to keep your brush fairly wet. I should make more small talk, but I just don't feel very talkative right now. And that's the last of the base coats. recording now, whatever. Go ahead and do the denim next, I think. Brayon Blue, 09055. Just a little bit of that, since it's only going on one part, and it's going to get watered down quite a bit.
making sure this goes into all the contours of the genes here, or the overalls, be technically correct. And that's all the denim on all of these. Start working on the pigs. That's going to be Rosy Shadow 09067. to carefully avoid the hooves as those are going to be a completely different color and since the hooves are lighter than the skin tone if this hits them it could cause some problems resulting in me having to repaint that Okay. It's another little chip of old paint. I use a piece of glass as a palette. And while it works out pretty good for cleaning, you do get little chips that refuse to come off, at least right away. And now for the pig that's actually in the catapult, or pigapult. Careful around the wrist because I want to get the ankles, but not the hooves. careful around the ropes in general because again I do not want to get this color on that section Okay. Let's see that denim's dry already. We can move on to the skin tone on the gremlin. That's gonna be muddy olive zero nine zero three four. 
don't need a whole lot since it's just a little bit. As long as this grumble has some kind of bracelet on, I'll have to patch that up later. Shouldn't take too much work. But that sometimes happens with this. As you prime and start painting again, sometimes details have got exposed from a darker, well, usually has with darker primers like what I use, but you'll end up seeing stuff you unintentionally covered up and have to kind of readjust what you were doing. It happens. I wouldn't worry about it. Making mistakes isn't a big deal. Fixing them is where the issue. Ah. Making mistakes isn't a big deal. Fixing them is important. I try to talk as fast as I think, and that's where I get into trouble on stuff like this. Okay. Carefully going over the arm, making sure I don't hit any areas I don't want to. Real careful around the rope binding here because that's already been shaded in a lighter color. Real careful around the steel. Just letting it, letting gravity do the work, letting the paint flow where it needs to flow. This is going to get onto the base. In this case, that's fine because, well, in most cases, it's fine because the base I do last anyway. But this is the same as the base coat on the bulk of the base, and the base itself is going to be done in a really dark, going to get a really dark shade on it.
and I'm not so much actively painting with little strokes as I am just running the brush over it and letting this wet paint just flow. see on a lot of models once you've done this after a while that paint like this will just practically get sucked up into the recessed areas Making sure to get around the spikes and the bindings, but not on. That's got that. I'll go ahead and do the ivory. Oops, where's the right in front of me? Stained ivory 09142. Don't need a whole lot, it's just teeth and hooves. I'm gonna start on the pig with its mouth open so I can do that tongue, hopefully. Before I have to cut from wait for paint to dry again. These videos are long, my goal is to teach you how to do this and not bore you to death. It makes you wonder if it is literally possible for someone to get bored to death. Carefully dotting around the hooves. Nice piggy. Grab it since it's still pretty wet. A pig in the pulp. And since I forgot this gremlin has a manic smile, we'll go ahead and put that in on the mouth there and just do a shade and highlight only. It might be a little weird, but it'll give it a different look to it. And Grumbles don't have the best hygiene standards anyway, so uh, grungy teeth would not be out of place on them. Skin tone is dry enough that I can go ahead and do that bracelet. Let's go ahead and do that in the same leather color as earlier. Why not? So that's going to be oiled leather, 09110. It's really hot out, so this should dry very quickly. In fact, some of that is so dry, I can actually get the Hold the shading and watch. Go. Yeah. Trying to once again talk as fast as I think, which has never worked out for me. It's a bad habit I am trying to change. Okay, now it's got that base coat on. Go ahead and start on the stones with the shading. Where did I put it? There it is. I'm gonna use Stormy Gray 09088. Grabbing a random pig. I'm 
being careful not to nick any of this onto the hooves. Flow around. the wrong paint. And I know this was a section of stone I missed over here. We'll just give it a shade now it does make it look a little different. That's okay. Go ahead and let's take a look at the pig that has the tongue. Yeah, the ivory's dry, so I can go ahead and shade the inside of the mouth. Okay, yeah, 0901 zero zero, zero 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 red brick. Just a tiny dot because it's the only patch of red on all of this. Let's carefully dab it on the tongue. If it gets in over. That's actually okay since these things are vicious and will eat anything their size or sometimes even larger. Now that that bracer on the gremlins had a chance to dry, we'll just go ahead and get that shade real quick. A tiny dot of ruddy leather, 09109. all over in there. Go ahead and finish up the shading right here and now with the mud on the base. We're going to do that with 09037 pure black. Doing this because this isn't this isn't just mud, this is mud, sewage, and who knows what else all mushed in together. As I mentioned a bit ago, gremlins live in the swamp in squalor. And get that really wet. These get a lot thinner than I usually do, actually, because even that isn't thin enough. So we don't want to completely obscure the base coat below this. We're going for just dark, muddy, and gross. We're going for this where it more looks like a film as opposed to anything else. Some of these other nicks and stray brush strokes are starting to come out here. They're still visible. Uh, we're going to highlight. I'll we'll get some of them, but others are just going to give character and help to show that this is not, you know, the clean, pristine, Disney esque mud you might see in Bambi or whatnot. Nasty, runny filth. And I don't particularly care that it's running into the shading on the stone in this case because, again, that will help to give it individual character and still achieve the desired effect. It's going to run more than usual, a lot more, in fact, just because I'm getting it a lot wetter. A lot more watered down. So, 
another topic with the discussion of primers. It actually does matter quite a bit what color primer you use. If you use a black primer, you'll get an overall darker appearance on the model, but will have to use multiple layers on lighter colors or otherwise repaint those bright areas in white before you put on your actual base coat. Well, as using white will result in much brighter colors more easily, which is really up to personal taste and what you want your models looking like. Grim and gritty, shiny and new. I've not used gray primer before, but it should give something kind of in between the two extremes. Color I primer I use will also depend on not just the color scheme, but the game as Warhammer 40,000, Malifaux, War Machine are darker, both in tone and kind of their inspiration. Relic Knights is an example. It's anime inspired, which kind of implies bright colors, M more cartoony. You're not expected, since it is anime inspired, to be uh, realistic. Or as realistic. So some of the fiction in the original rule book is actually pretty brutal. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly when I'll get to other Relic Knights models. Got two more in my queue. I don't know when I'm going to get to those. And I did support the Kickstarter. I will probably put priority on those when I get that. Uh, starting to come in, which should be in a couple of months. And that gets the shading. We'll just let that dry completely and then move on to highlight. Alright, time to highlight. Again, going lowest area to highest. We'll start with the red on the mouth of that one pig. 09203, is that right? blood red. This is one where I had to kind of put the number on the label in the ink pen after it wore out. Some colors I use all the time, some I hardly ever touch. do like to have a pretty wide palette though, just in case. Rubber from very lightly on the inside. It's okay that it's getting on the yeah cheeks there because that's going to get taken care of in a minute. Clean the brush thoroughly. And make sure that's really dry. And then. 09144 Creamy Ivory. This is going to go on the hooves and the teeth. Don't need a whole lot. It's just a tiny little bit here and there. Again, run it on a paper towel so there's hardly any left. Like dust. And that accentuates the raised areas. So it's Grumman's mouth. And 
And this may not necessarily be a realistic color for pig hooves, but um, again, you can paint these however you want. And honestly, since so many of these fall in the realm of fantasy, science fiction, and science fantasy, as well as industrial revolution fantasy, i.e. steampunk, it's whatever you want. It doesn't have to be scientifically accurate. Rosie Highlight 09069 for the pig skin. And you got edges like on the shoulder blades of this pig and those folds in its neck. I don't want to go across them so that they get the best highlight possible. You can really see the definition in the eyebrows on the tip of the nose here. Again, cleaning out the brush thoroughly, getting really dry. And again, the best brushes for dry brushing are these ratty ones that you've used a while, so we we'll basically want to keep these until they fall apart completely. And then pale green 09036 for the skin on the gremlin. Don't need a whole lot, just a bit.
good. And probably the brown on the pig will put itself next. Let's see, it's going to be Driftwood Brown, 09162. And the reason I'm trying to list off the serial numbers on these paints are Reapers changed the names a couple of times, but they haven't changed the serial number tied to each color. Not that I've seen anyway. I'm not going to worry so much about the inside of the catapult as I am the exterior features. I'm going to dry brush on that wheel. Plank. I'm not caring that I'm going to hit the ropes on this too much because they're going to get highlighted in a minute. And you can already see this is bringing out some of that wood grain texture on the catapult arm. I probably won't ever do an assembly video because I just like to dive in that right away as soon as I get something. But I can tell you this was a bit of a pain to put together. Because you can see here, there's not a whole lot of structure holding this together when you, or a whole lot of glue points. It's basically just right here at the front and this little bit right there that's holding two halves of this thing together. Once it's glued, it's just fine, but it's a bit annoying to get it assembled, honestly. Decent looking kit, though. Okay, that's got that. Right, clean it out really thoroughly again. And the leather, I suppose. Burnt orange, 09111. Another one's almost out. No, that is way too much, but that sometimes happens when you have a bottle that's almost empty. <clears throat> try to brush that little armlet, suspenders, and on the back because that got muddied up a bit when I did the skin tone. And the boots, of course. And the reason I'm crimping the pig itself instead of the base here is this is pretty thin and this can get a little rough. You don't want to risk it snapping on you, which can happen. And then that cord. Yeah, 
you can see right here as I draw a brush that's really popping the raised areas. It's almost all the leather. I got that binding right there. I'll go ahead and on the inside and there and carefully behind the chromin. Okay, that leaves the denim and steel and the details. Let's go ahead and do the denim next. That's ash and blue. 09057. And just carefully. Still a bit wet. Okay, try again carefully, just dry brushing the overalls. Just going for getting these raised areas highlighted so that they stand out, which also makes the shadowed areas stand out. Go ahead and use 09207 True Silver. But you could use other metallics to highlight to give a rusty effect. That's something I'll go over uh, later on with other models, I think. We'll make this one a fairly clean new catapult, I think. Give the operator a shiny spyglass. A shiny new pot, probably stolen from someone. Because that is how gremlins and Malifaux roll. The gear, the lever, those enforcing discs, that hook, the cup. Which one is that? Gear spikes. Okay, went up a little. Very easy to fix. Yeah, there's just a little bit of pink on the cup here. Fix that. And then the facing Misty Gray zero nine zero nine zero. real quick. We're not going to spend a whole lot of time on the basing. To be honest, I think a base should never detract from the model standing on it. After all, how would it look if you took, if you made a, uh, let's say, miniature Washington Monument and put a model on top of that or made a or a miniature of the St. Petersburg Cathedral in Russia for a model to stand on. Just trying to think of some of the more impressive structures I know of. But the focus should be on the model standing on the base, not what it's standing on. Okay. Now the mud. Go ahead and take, uh, let's go with the deep red. 09002. 
Because again, this isn't, you know, clean, pristine mud. This is grungy, filthy mud. I'm not going to spend too much time on high whiting it either. We're just going to give it a real quick dry brush. Pig pull itself. Being real careful to avoid hitting areas with other textures on it. Again, not spending a whole lot of time on this last one, just enough to make some of the raised areas look a little better. Now, some details. Really, just got the eyes. But first, when I'm thinking about it, I need to color around the base. Go ahead and then use oh, Olive Green 09035 for that. So unlike War Machine, Malifaux does not have any front arcs or anything like that. They can tack anything all around them. Do the edges here. Take a larger brush. Don't know what that gunk in it is. Being very careful trying to get only the actual edge of the base. Turned out to be not a very good brush for this. My other choices. This might work a little better. The reason I choose to do it in a color rather than just straight black, for example, is kind of an homage to my love of real time strategy games, which are probably the closest parallel to a tabletop game you can get on a video game console. This brush is kind of beat up too. I'm going to have to buy new brushes already, I wonder? Not working out too good either. What the heck is going on today? Uh, I'll try this one. So the selection of colors here is just something to go with the faction. So that I just feel those with them. completely arbitrary.
Got just enough to do this. And I'm gripping the model very lightly, not squeezing. Her. Be very careful about parts where it's extending past the lip of the base. Don't want to undo all the hard work we just did. Good. And let's see how that drawing. Let's go for it. Okay, now for some eyes. Zero nine zero three nine pure white. Tiny bit. Very fine brush. Start it in. Error. Huh. Do something off this brush again. I'm just carefully. back and put pupils in a little later on. Back. This brush is starting to fray. Get that strand out. This happens sometimes. And the eyes. I'm using actually very little water compared to the rest. Grown. It's got one eye. It's barely peeking out from under that pot. Scope or t telescope. Don't know why I, I'm confusing those two. They are very different. Maybe I just need an app. I don't know. That sounds pretty good. <laughs> the eyes on the less than enthused pig. Last drawing will number the piglets. Again, numbering them for my own convenience, since in game each of these will have its own health and own reference card. So I'm just picking the sculpt I like best, and I like to put it on the back. That's a little wet on that one. Let's do something else. So just Roman numerals. They are quick and easy to paint. Three and one. 
I'm not going to put any numbering on the pigapole itself because per game rules you can only take one of it anyway. So I only do this on models where you're gonna possibly end up with multiples the same. And again, it's easier to reference a number than to try to compare to a reference card's picture, especially if you're using a sculpt that differs from the one on the actual card. And then go ahead and see if that ash and blue from earlier now it's already dry, so we'll put a little bit of ash and blue. That. Go ahead and mix it up with the white. <laughs> Losing my mind, I almost put this in the water cup. Okay, maybe I do need that. Get that nice and wet, mix it with the white a bit, lighten it up, make a nice wash. It's pretty good. Just gonna get dotted over the end of the telescope. Give it a lens. And it's not completely covering up the white, just enough to give it a little bit of edge. And since a lot of the gremlins in this game seem to have big, bulging red bloodshot eyes, go ahead and, with no pupils I should add, just a tiny dot of that blood red from earlier. Again, diluting it to an almost ink-like quality, but not so much that it'll flow out on the parts I don't want it on, and just carefully dot it in the eye there. Then we'll give those pigs some pupils with pure black. 09037. Tiny bit. And this thing is squeezing out too much. I think I let the nozzle get clogged and didn't catch it. And more carefully than with the light, just little bit in about the center. And by placing it in different parts of the eye, you can get it look in different directions. Though it is possible to end up with googly eyes. <laughs> And this is pretty much pure paint with almost no water in the brush. It's not brushing it on, we are just dotting it in. And that's pretty much it. A pig a pult. Just need some varnishing. And some piglets. And while I normally like to paint these models in the order I buy them, next time is going to be a recent acquisition for reasons I will reveal right off the bat when I open it up.